I've seen this on YouTube. I don't know why his mom did that, but it's not okay. He's a child. He should be dressing as a young man playing football, taking out the trash. Here we see these young men that are wearing makeup. They have beards. This have feminine spirit and still saying I can be masculine, which is a lie. Um, we need to be born again because the lie, the devil is deceiving. A man should be a man. A man should not be wearing makeup. Um, because God said he shouldn't. A man should not be wearing dresses because God said he shouldn't. Um, this effeminate spirit will lead to hell. A man should be a whole man. We see the lie in that they still have their beard on, um, but they still rocking that makeup. That's that whole mix match spirit. That whole, oh, I can be a man and a female. No, that's a lie. Um, but you have to be delivered. You have to come into the grace and the knowledge of God to understand that it's a lie, to understand the confusion and the lies that the devil is feeding you. Because if not, you're just going to be like, oh, they hating people like me or hating. They preaching hate speech. Just let me be me. Look at this lie. This handsome man with that beard and he's handsome. And then the makeup just on fleek. It's, it looks good, but it's a lie because they're men. It's a lie because makeup don't belong on a man. And then we see these boy in dresses and these men in dresses like it's okay that, oh, I can be a man. You see, he got his beard and all that. Oh, it's okay for a boy to wear a dress. And then you got these famous stars wearing men. Uh, these men, these rappers wearing dresses. This turn out, there is an attack on masculinity. There was a time where black men was always going to be black men. We wasn't wearing no dresses. This guy in the middle is famous for this. They have a form of godliness. I've seen them at the awards clapping for the gospel artists. But look at this lie. Look at this whole man in a dress. That's a lie. Look at this. That's wickedness. I can see the demonic spirit on him. And look at the dude in black with a sheer thing on, making them think they sexy. So what's the answer? Jesus is the answer because he never created a man to, par to parade around, to parade around like a woman. He just never did. And then this is another lie. Why are you women dressing your little girls like whores? Why? Let them dress like children. Stop. Hear somebody say, how do you know? Who are you to judge and say they're not saved but don't have a relationship with God just based off of them being gay or dressing like they do or, or anything like that? To answer your question, if you're truly saved, you're not going to be still in a lifestyle of homosexuality. That's the first one. God will convert you. He will save and he delivers. So you will be born again. So you won't be a practicing gay and say that you're saved. It don't work that way because the Holy Spirit goes against the flesh. It convicts us to repent because he loves us and he's not going to let us live a lie and think we're going to hell heaven second thing is if they truly had a relationship with god he would again tell them that the way they're going is wrong to repent and be born again and so you would see them converting and coming back into their masculinity because god is a holy god he's the same yesterday today and forevermore and it says in the word you know them by their fruits so if they truly had a relationship if they truly would save a truly spirit filled god would not allow them god would not still um be allowing them to live their lifestyle like he would convert them he would save them so it's evident that since they're dressing this way and thinking it's okay, that they have a reprobated mind. God said, because they practice these abominations in the word of God, I'm summarizing. He said, I will give them over to a reprobated mind, thinking what is right is wrong and what's wrong is right. Men burning their lust for one another, likewise women going with women. So um, the answer is that Jesus saves, but I'm just letting you guys know for those that are saying, well, how do you know they're not saved? because of their fruits their fruits show that they truly don't have christ because if they did he would deliver them and he would convict them to repent and come out of that lifestyle and you would see that transformation from effeminate to effeminity to masculinity or that effeminate man to a truly masculine man because god is strong he's holy and he made a man to be a king not a queen so you would sh you would see the transformation if they truly had christ um so what they have is rep a reprobated mind. They think it's okay. That's the answer to your question. Jesus saves. Do you see a before and after? Let's go into scripture. Let's go a little deeper. Okay, now you may be saying, why are you being so mean? They're not doing anything to everybody. No foul intention, no harm done. Just let them live their lives the way they want to live. But it's actually the love of God in me that comes to bring warning and to let people know that, hey, while God does give us a choice, he doesn't force us to serve him or to repent or turn from sin. If you continue in these sins, in any sin, it can be fornication, um, adultery, you will go to hell. And he came that we might have life. But if you continue in a lie, you will end up in hell. So it's a love of God in me that says, hey, this is wrong. Um, God calls you to be born again. If not, 
hell is waiting for you and that's not his desire so here are a few scriptures that speak against men having effeminate um spirits meaning um homosexual spirits a man dressing as a woman putting on makeup anything that is not of the such likewise the man romans 1 and 27 says likewise the men abandon their natural relations with women relationships sexual wise and burned with the lust for one another men committed indecent acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty for their error they received flesh in themselves from another man um this is abomination and it's the same thing for women and that was romans 1 and 27 Okay, next scripture is 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. It says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate. These are men that dress like women, act like women, homosexuals, nor abusers of themselves with mankind shall enter into the kingdom. It says, they will not inherit the kingdom, but it ends with themselves of mankind. Um, so this is not me trying to be all preachy preachy. This is me out of love letting y'all know that I'm not attacking any person you see in this video. That's why I should have their eyes blocked out. Um, but I am attacking the spirit. There is a, a spiritual attack on the masculinity of men in these last days. And the scripture talks about in the last days, there'll be a great fall on the way. But there's talk, they're talking about the church. But it also talks about how men will have a form of God. Godliness. You may see some of these gay men in dresses. There's a popular one. I should include him this and, and he wears, you know, they may wear crosses. They mean seem religious, get up when gospel artists perform, but they are deceived. You can't be walking around as a man in a dress. God said that a man ought not wear anything pertaining to a woman or a woman pertaining to a man. It says in the last days, um, uh, what does it say? In the last days, people will have a form of godliness, but deny the fullness thereof. Hold on. Let me go to that scripture. Do, 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 do. Ah, la, la, la. It's uh, right here on this tab. Second Timothy three and two for men will be lovers of themselves. Um, lovers of money, boastful, proud, pride, gay pride, any type of pride is sin. Beyonce sin, bow down, that's pride, sin. We're only supposed to bow down to God. Abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy. Um, it also talks about them having um, inordinate affection for one another. Um, but it's boastful, pride, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, and unholy. When we see a man wearing makeup, that's unholy. When we see a woman dressed as another woman, that's unholy. When we see somebody committing adultery or fornication, that is unholy. But this topic, I'm speaking to the spirit attacking masculinity in the last days. Now, we want to talk about Sodom and Gomorrah because some people say, well, God loves gay people. He does love gay people. He loves all people no matter their sin, but he hates the sin. The sin is a lie. And it says that a liar shall not tarry in God's eyesight. And what we make um, our lifestyles, when our lifestyles go against God's word, we are trying to make him a lie. And he is not a lie. He's the truth. So he will cast every lie into the lake of fire. That's not his will. That's what our sin does, no matter what it is. He loves us, but he does not agree nor accept the sin. At first, we have to acknowledge that it is sin and then repent and then turn from the sin. So Ezekiel 16, 49 and 15 is the last scripture. Now, this was the sin of your, because we know that he destroyed a whole city, Sodom and Gomorrah, for pride. They did not give to the poor. And it says that they committed um, abominable acts before God. So he said he took them away as he saw good. And it is in 16, 49 and 50. So, oh, where does it say that God hates homosexuality? That is the sin. Well, he destroyed a whole city for it. So it's pretty obvious that he don't want men walking around in dresses or makeup. And then some of them go so bold so we have makeup on their face and still have a whole beard this whole androlican crossover spirit half man half woman is of satan this stuff is it's a spirit so these these people are victim to a spirit of homosexuality of effeminate of of half man half woman there's no such thing as transgender whatever god made you that's what you are he didn't create transformers he created a person period a man or a woman and that's who we are we can change the outside we can go through surgery a man can never have a period a man can never give birth a woman can never get another woman pregnant she can never have testosterone she can never have a, te a testicles period 
Now, this was the sin of your system, Sodom. She and her daughters were arrogant, overfed, and unconcerned. They did not help the poor and needy. They were haughty, prideful, and did abomin abominations, practice abominations in my sight. Therefore, I did take them away, as you have seen. So if you're one of the men on this video and you fall into this category of men with an effeminate spirit, maybe you were raped, maybe you were molested, maybe that's just been you since you were a child. The good news is you can be born again. You don't have to stay that way. Now, if you want to stay that way, then you're going to have to answer to God and you can't make it into the kingdom that way. Same ways, likewise, woman like a woman. I don't care if you've been doing it since you were two. That's why he said be born again because we were born into sin. In sin did my mother conceive me. Psalms 51, David cried. But David then said, create in me a clean heart, renew a right spirit in me. Wash me truly from my iniquity. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. He didn't die for our sins but to continue in sins but for us to make a pivot turn from sin turn to him lord help me i'm dirty i'm a sinner i'm filthy um i came out my mother's womb a sinner lord change me deliver me fill me with your holy spirit you'll be baptized in jesus name acts 2 and 38 when you truly have a heart to turn from sin you got to have that heart to repent and then he will fill you with his holy spirit and that will help you live right and talk right and through christ a gay man can be made straight an okay woman can be made straight and an adulterer can come out of sin just like that adulterer he said neither do i condemn you but go and sin no more. We know that nobody's perfect, but we're supposed to strive. We know that all have sinned and fell short for the glory, but all do not continue to live a life of sin. That's why he said, be ye holy for I am holy. First Peter one, um, chapter 14 through 16. I want to make sure that's right before I leave out because I don't want to misquote scripture, but it does say, be ye holy for I am holy. Through 16, it says, who can ascend unto the hill of the Lord? He that hath clean hands, meaning has not um, gone against the innocent, innocent blood, abortionists, uh, abortions, repent. Uh, that's that's taking innocent lives or causing um, the poor to suffer, taking money, taking whatever, cheating them. And a pure heart. We have to have a pure heart. He said, from the heart proceeds things that take us to hell. That's I'm, I'm um, paraphrasing it. But he says, from the heart, he says, you Pharisees, you look good on the outside you're religious on the outside religion don't save you being a catholic a muslim a buddhist don't save you but being born again washing the blood of jesus and being filled with his holy spirit and living that straight and narrow that holy life only by his blood and his spirit will save you and that's only through jesus can we be saved but um uh, he that hath clean hands and a pure heart, because he said, from the heart proceeded blaspheme is adultery, fornication, pride, murder. And he told those Pharisees, you clean and you wash your hands, because they said he didn't wash his hands or something. They were so religious and based on laws. But he said, but your inside is full of maggots and worms and dirty and sin, fornication, blasphemy, is adultery, homosexuality. He said, come to me that I may clean your inside first. You know, and he calls us the modesty on the outside, but he's saying you look you look religious, you look right on the outside, but you're dirty on the inside. And he wants us to be clean. Okay, um as obedient children, not to first Peter fourteen through sixteen, as obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance, but just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do, for it is written, Be ye holy, because I am holy. First Peter one, fourteen through sixteen. The only way you can do that is by being born again. Acts chapter two, verse thirty eight reads, Then Peter said on the day of Pentecost, Repent and be baptized in Jesus' name for the remissions of your sins, and it says, And ye shall receive receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit in order to live holy, but first we have to acknowledge that we're in sin, whatever the sin is. And um, I'm going to end it with that. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your body is a temple. Men, it was never meant. God never made a man to sleep with another man because they can't they can't have sex. They can be a do abominable, 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 lustful acts, but they cannot have sex. They cannot create life. Likewise, a woman and a woman. This is not hate speech. This is me loving you enough to say, hey, you're on your way to hell. Look. Here's a warning. Jesus saves. Jesus delivers. I don't care how long you've been practicing, who turns you out, how long you've been doing it. This is you. You need to repent. You need to turn from this because there is a train ahead that's going to crash and end in flames for all eternity. And that train is called the ways of the world, sin. So turn from that, hop on, follow Jesus and live. Um, 
So there's a spirit that says it's okay. I know everybody loves um, gay guys in the industry, in the world. Everybody got a sweet gay friend. It's got just got this full of personality. He know I do hair. He know I do makeup. But these things are not pleasing. Now, I'm not saying a straight man can't do hair and makeup and still be straight. But, you know, often because of these reasons, because gay men are funny and they, they good in fashion and all that, we, we let it sip into the church and we let it get away. But we have to warn him, hey, God, God loves you. But the spirit, you know, I don't care how good they hair how makeup the spirit is not pleasing to God because he never called a man to wear dress or wear makeup so I just wanted to give y'all those scriptures to let y'all know I'm not just speaking hate here just putting people on blast the reason is Jesus loves you and he wants to save you and he calls us to be born again and he calls a man. We need you to be men, especially in these last days. Our sons need you. They're confused. If you're confused as a man or a woman, Jesus wants to correct that. Um, God is not of confusion. That's the devil. The devil would say, oh, you should have been a man. You should have been a woman. God is testing you. So he put you in his body. God don't test nobody. We're drawn away of our own lust. He may allow certain things to come your way. It does not mean that was his will for you to get raped, for you to get molested, for you to get beat, for you to get turned out. That was not his will. But sometimes when we get rape the murder that turns us out into an alternative lifestyle but he can turn you back in to what you create what he created you to be he said behold i make all things new it doesn't matter what you are or what your past is he wants to save you and make you who you are in him it's not who the devil the world says you are it's who you are in him however you can't say that you're blessed and highly favored a covenant under the blood and you a whole homosexual or you're saying you're a transgender when there's no such thing or you're a dyke a female dressing as a boy no you got to come out of that sin you got to at least humble yourself you might recognize that there was an anointing on your life but you can't fully be blessed and walk in the favor and the perfect will of god until you repent and give that sin to jesus and say lord i can't do it you created me a clean heart. You washed me. I struggled with lust for years and God delivered me. And even times when I went back here, when I was saved here and there once a year, he still is gracious enough to forgive, but I don't play with God. And I fight for my life. I fight against lust. I fight against sin every day. But you have to have the power of the Holy Spirit to do so because without it, we are powerless. So Jesus loves you. Please repent. Be born again. Men, take your place. You are a king. You are strong. You are prevalent. God wants you to be resilient. He wants you to be delivered from that effeminate spirit, that, that homosexual spirit. He wants to save you. Yes, he loves you uh, the way he loves you right now, no matter what our sin is. But he does not agree with your sin. He hates the sin. That sin will cause his wrath to come on your life. Because you might be a whole pastor, evangelist, preacher, prophetess, minister, deacon, but you out here living this lifestyle and it's angering him because he keeps trying to get your attention but you keep being religious you go going to church you're in the pulpit you're singing in the choir maybe you don't do that but you're in sin he wants to pull you out harden not your heart against god he loves you be born again turn from sin men take your place you are a king you are never meant to be a queen a if a she a queer a, there's no such thing as transgender there's no such thing as lgbtq and not giving a cute nickname to sin we don't give a cute nickname to child molesters to rapists to murderers well it's not the same thing they're not hurting somebody in god's eye it is because sin is sin as a matter of fact, it's worse because at least with a man and a woman could be in fornication, a blessing come out of a child. There can be no blessing that comes out of a man or a woman or a woman and a woman because it's a lie. It's worse. It's an abomination. It's an exact lie. People that don't serve Jesus, serving Mary and Buddha, they're an abomination. He loves them, but he hates the sin and he hates idolatry. And these days we make transgenders and queers and uh, what's those women called? Um drag queens and all this idols and wicked we like to be entertained god is displeased that's a man wearing that makeup and that wig he's displeased he called him to be a king to be a husband to be a, a father to his children he, he sees everything he should be in the spirit while the devil got him walking around in a dress and heels that isn't that don't you know god god hates that sin he loves a person he hates the sin and he delivers Suicide is not the answer. I do not advocate violence. I don't advocate beating up gay men or gay women, killing them. I don't advocate no kind of violence or no kind of hate because only Jesus can deliver us from whatever the sin is. But I do urge you to repent because you are being deceived by the enemy in that spirit.
I don't care how how they make, that sin makes you feel. I keep looking at it. I don't, I'm going too long. Jesus wants to li- deliver you. You're walking to hell. You might be ha- on the on the highway to hell. You're having a good time, but it's not worth burning for all eternity. Do you know in hell, demons torture gay men's private parts. They put them up on these strings. I'm not exaggerating. Heaven and hell revelations will reveal it. YouTube it. And they take these big torches and pierce their dinglings. They just pierce them and torture them all day because that's the pleasure they took in. So imagine how worse it would be for men to just flaunt around in dresses and makeup don't be deceived and if i was a sinner and i didn't understand the word i would take this personal too it would just make me do it even more because i wouldn't get where you're coming from but if you take some time humble yourself and get into the word and ask god lord is there any truth into what i'm hearing what does your word say about my lifestyle what does your word say about being gay or being what they call a queer transgender which it doesn't mention it says effeminate or homosexuality it talks about that but we have these other nicknames for it but it's it's called a sodomite, Sodom and Gomorrah. It says that we ought to repent. It says that you can't make it into heaven that way, neither as a fornicator, as an adulterer, and even as an abortionist. We have to repent from all of these. And then as an ex, whatever the sin was, you can make it in because then you turn from sin and turn to God. He's cleaned you up every day. You're walking by his spirit. If you unintentionally, you know, do something, it may not be go back into that lifestyle, but, you know, unintentionally slip here and there. And I'm not talking about into a homosexuality. I'm saying, you know, maybe you accidentally cut somebody out. Maybe you accidentally, uh, maybe you was ex-gay, but now you accidentally then they had sex one time. God will forgive you, whatever the sin is. And if you're struggling, he wants to set you free. However, be not deceived and think that you can be gay, a transgender, is no such thing, or any of these things, even a homosexual, I'm sorry, even a fornicator, an adulterer, or killing babies, an abortionist, woman rights. This is sin. This is pride. And go to heaven. You can't. You have to repent. And you can be an ex that. Then you will have a testimony like I do. God deliver me from lust and pride. Uh, and I'm still praying, Lord, keep vanity, keep pride the way because I love beauty but everything that is um that we put before God is idolatry he hates idols matter of fact he kills idols um he kills idols um celebrities that are leading souls to hell you know if they don't get right with God they burn in hell their torture is greater because they could have won that many more souls to heaven but they chose to use it for themselves so don't get caught up and let me not get too deep Turn from sin and turn to Christ. He loves you, but he hates the sin. Men, you are a king, and he never meant for you to be anything else but a king. He does not, he's not pleased with you wearing makeup or a dress. He will love, he still loves the people in hell, but he but guess what? They still in hell because of their sin. He died that we might have life, that we might, if we turn from sin and turn to him. So do that and be born again. This has went entirely too long. Jesus loves you. Repent and be the king that he has called you to be. Raise these young men up to be the young, young men and the um, princes and the kings and the husbands that God has called them to be and the preachers and the prophets. Raise these young women to be queens. They're not kings. They're not confused. They're not in between. They're not half horse, half woman, half woman, half man. No, they are who God made them are. Raise them up to be queens, women, prophetess, um, evangelists, whoever God calls them, but uh, identify them as who they are in Christ. I am a female. God made me a female. I don't care what I was. I remember as a young child asking my mom, oh, I'm looking at her butt. Uh, mom, am I gay? I had a friend and she was already built at nine or 10. I remember I used to look at her butt a lot because I was just intrigued. Like, wow, her butt is really big. And I wasn't even gay. I was just like, wow, her butt is really big. But say, let's just say I was gay. Say I was gay since I was two. The right response from my mama would be, it's not to kick me out the house not to hate me would be to take me to the altar to pray for me just pray for me because you can't beat it out of a child that's that's sin you can't beat no sin out of nobody so crime hate is not the answer jesus is love but you have to pray it away and guess what? If you praying and you praying and they still don't deliver it, but you telling them the word, and tell, then at that point, it's between them and God because you can't force it on them. I can still love you, but in my house, certain things you're just not going to do. When you get grown, you can do what you want to do, but I'm going to enforce the word of God. And I don't have to do it with a whoop or a belt. I don't have to because because God is love. Now, I do believe in disciplining our children, but I just mean if they do something wrong. You know what I'm saying? So if they're going the wrong way, you got to tell them the word, teach them, raise them up in the ways of the word, and let, and let the Lord deal with it. But you have to acknowledge that it's the wrong way but anyway my mother was like no you're not gay now what if I she was yeah you're gay go ahead and start dressing like a boy I would have been confused I would have been like okay I guess I'm gay 
But she was like, no, you're not gay. You know, the girl just had a big butt and I had just never seen nothing like that. But like I said, if I was, the right response would be to pray for me, take me to the altar. Because y'all like that, like people try to pray it away and they don't get delivered. A lot of times, if you go to a holiness church, people with the real, the full of the Holy Spirit, they can deliver that child from that spirit. And like I said, if wherever you at, it ain't that God don't deliver. It's probably that them people ain't even saved in the first place. They probably not even a real church. They probably in sin. So of course that demon ain't going to listen when they in sin too. But if you get around some real Holy Ghost filled people, I'm talking about at a holiness church, even at a non-denomination church, anybody that's really living saved, oh, they can cast them demons out in the name of Jesus. When there's power, Jesus moves. If you live in right, Jesus will work through that person and cast that demon out. However, if it's still a struggle, then leave it between them and that individual, that child, that teenager. Let God continue to work, but don't continue. Don't stop taking them to Sunday school or telling them what's right or wrong. And keep loving them, but keep telling them the truth. Don't accept uh, anything that the devil said. Oh, that's a boy or will. I guess she'll go this way. I didn't believe until I had a child that was that way. No. Jesus saves and delivers. We were born to sin. You got to pray even harder. And there's power in the name of Jesus. And there's power when you live right. He going to work through it. When you live right, you got some Holy Ghost power. My mom used to anoint my pillows, anoint my room. And I would get in there trying to masturbate and all that. And I tried. I remember one time trying to do it. And I couldn't get that good feeling. And I was like, what is going on? And I immediately knew. I was like, it's because my mom was so full of the Holy Spirit. She done came here and anointed it. The Lord ain't even letting me do what I want to do. That's the grace of God. He don't do that for everybody. But because I had a praying mom, he intervened in the mix of my sin. And he didn't let me go all the way out into that lifestyle because I would have been a stripper. I would have been a dyke. I would have been everything under the sun. I would have been a killer, a murderer. I would have been a gangster because I haven't seen it in dreams, different aspects. I've seen myself as a dyke, seen myself as a stripper, seen myself as a, like a thug dyke. Like I've seen myself as the worst of the worst. So I'm not just talking because I would have been these things. But the grace of God preserved me and having a praying mother makes a difference. But if you don't pray for yourself, if you gay, just call out to God, just begin to seek God. He will deliver you. If nobody else in your house is, is um, saved, it makes it harder. But guess what? He's right there with you. He, you will be the first one that he saves in your family and you will be a testimony. And Jesus loves you. And this is went too far. Please stop dressing these young ladies like little thoughts and little whores out here. They four five and six and y'all got many dresses and grown-up outfits on them they're little girls dress them as little girls god is not pleased jesus loves you be born again this is in love it's not in hate because if i was on my way if i was a sinner i wouldn't play with god i, I don't care what sinner i wouldn't play with them but i would respect people that came and did what i'm doing right now telling people the truth because so many people in these last days don't because they don't want to lose a job they don't want to lose friends but if i'm on my way to hell and you know the way um to heaven and you know what i'm doing is wrong god's gonna hold you accountable if you don't tell these people your cousins your kids your nephews your grandchildren that they are on the wrong path and that jesus is not pleased and not okay with homosexuality okay these little nicknames lgbtq is just a sodomy it's homosexuality he's not pleased with it he ain't pleased with fornication or adultery or abortion either he hates the sin but he loves the person but we have to acknowledge that it's sin and he will save you so keep seeking him i don't care if it don't happen overnight get rid of the clothes get rid of the men get rid of the makeup woman get rid of the boy clothes get rid of everything get rid of the music and the movies the pornography everything that's tearing you away from the heart of god that's when you're really trying to get clean because some people say oh he can just take it away yes he can but what are you going to do for your part because he it's his will to take it away but you have to do your part too meaning if you need to stop dressing like a boy and your girl throw away the music throw away the dvs the DVDs of pornography of the hood sex movies. I know because I used to watch them hanging with the wrong crowd. You're going to make some decisions. It's either Jesus and eternal life and getting on this straight and narrow, getting in a good church. I recommend a holiness church or a good non-denominational church as long as they're preaching the word. It's either that or you continue living in your pleasures of sin and burn forever. He ain't make nobody to burn forever. These people in hell wish they had another chance. These people in hell, these gay men, these gay women, fornicators, adulterers, abortioners, gossipers, religious folks that played lukewarm, played with God. They wish they had another chance to come back and do what I'm doing. Urge people to repent. It's too late, but it's not for you. He loves you. Turn from the sin. Men be a king. He didn't create you to walk around as a, as a parading as a drag queen or with makeup or heels. That, 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 that. That, that tears his heart out and it causes him to be, he's sad about that and he's frustrated because you're a man. He didn't make you to do that regardless of how you got that way. Same thing with woman. So repent. Jesus is the answer and he does save. And guess what? He cleans up and leaves no residue. I don't care if you're attracted to the same sex. He will clean that up in his time, however long that takes, what that process looks like between you and God and he will leave no residue. 
and you don't have to live a miserable life like a lie. Like, oh, they're saying I got to be this way. That's not what I like. He will change you and create a clean heart, renew a right spirit so that you would enjoy the opposite sex and your husband and your wife for the opposite sex. Yeah, because he delivers and saves. So you don't have to be, oh, I, I wouldn't like that. That would make me miserable. That's not me. That's because right now the identity you are assuming is the identity of the enemy. But when you come into Christ and are born again, he will give you his identity in you, which is your true identity. And he will make every crooked path in your heart and every desire and everything that you like that's not of him. Make it straight. He will fix it. Every bent and every curve, he's going to fix it in his process, in his time for you. Start now because it's not too late. He hasn't come back yet. I love, God, I love you and God loves you. Please repent and turn from sin and hear my heart. My heart is crying that Jesus loves you. And right now, if you don't repent and you continue, you're on your way to hell. But hope is that you can stop. You can hear the message. You can seek God and you can begin to pursue God, pursue Jesus and be saved. Because I can't save you, but Jesus can. I'm just a messenger. It's his word that it backs up everything I'm saying. He saves, he delivers, he loves us, but he hates the sin. He will forever love the people in hell, but their sin eternally separated them from Christ. Don't let it be you because I ain't letting it be me. Lust, vanity, fame, pride, <laughs> nothing is worth my soul. Nothing is worth separating me from the love of God. The reason why you can be on earth and have some type of joy or peace because you got the sky, you got the sun, you got birds, you can go do things and they don't even have to be drinking or involved in sin. I can go ice skating. I can go on a picnic. I can go uh, um, to St. Thomas and we ain't got to do no sin. We can go eat. We can go to the beach. We ain't got to do no sin. We can have good, clean fun. I mean wholesome fun and it ain't got to be boring either i can go out to eat i can i can go out with my christian friends we can drink a virgin pina colada or a slut you know what i'm saying you don't have to do all i'm saying is that the, the way the reason why you have joy in this life is because god's spirit is still on the earth but being apart from him because of our sin the devil doesn't show you that part in hell is eternal misery and you can't get out of that on top of that they're torturing you on top of that you're burning and the worm never dies it speaks of it in the bible the flame does not cease and a worm does not die. Google it. So why would you want to risk that? Because of the lie from Satan telling you, a man, that you should put on makeup, you should be dressed, this is good. No, this is what you like. You can never be straight. That's a lie. Jesus saves and delivers, but the choice is yours. Jesus loves you. Harden not your heart against the voice of God's messenger. Um, God bless you. Oh. Before I say God bless you because he don't bless mess, what I want to say is I pray that Jesus saves anybody that's in that lifestyle and after he saves and delivers, blesses you on the path once you get on the path he has for you. Because he be giving blessings our way. You know, he might bless you with a good job and you all in sin. It doesn't mean he's pleased with your lifestyle because he reigns on the just and the unjust. The Bible says that. So I pray that Jesus saves you and then once he puts you in his will, he blesses and favors you. Um, um, so humble yourselves. I'm out.